Hey guys, I'm going to show you my latest project, my latest masterpiece. It's a 3D printed robotic arm. <clears throat> uh, it's got five axes, six steppers, controlled by Arduino, and there's the six steppers over there. It's all belt driven, there's no feedback on the joints. At the minute, it's all connected roughly. Chocker block going to umbilical cords um, eventually this, these cords will run down the center center rotation on, on the base joint so you won't be able to see all this this will be hidden and I do want to put a nice 3d printed case on the back here but at the minute I'm just prototyping to make sure it works and it's working really well I'm really chuffed with it it's currently taking commands over serial so I've got one, two, three, five digits for each axis, separated by a comma, and then the software passes it and then moves the joint to that angle. Uh, the way I've done it is, so if I move all these joints to that position there, you'll see it now move. Sorry about the focus. And I'll rotate it. Bring it 45 degrees back to me. I want to focus. Yeah. So I mean, it's not it's not calibrated perfectly, but so if you look at the joints, <clears throat> um, straight up vertical is zero degrees. And the way I've done it is, say if I wanted to move this to 20 degree, 20 degrees, it would move the axis forward 20 degrees or minus 20, move it back minus 20. With this joint, same again. Everything's relative to its previous joint, so that's that's the datum. That's going vertical, so straight up. This arm straight up would be uh, zero degrees, and now it's currently at ninety. Well, roughly ninety. Um, if I move it back down to the sort of home position. Keep that joint minus 45. So it's got to reach about I think it was 900 centimeters from pivot point to the center point of that tool on the end effector. Uh, the belt drive is quite handy. It's a, got a bit, took a bit of fiddling, especially when 3D printing the gears for GT3, as it needed a bit of post production really needed a bit of uh, drilling and filing and sanding to get the teeth to, to mesh correctly. So here's a closer look at the base. See it's all belt driven. All the pinions are 3D printed with grub screws. Uh, my belt pinion is not perfect there. That was my first belt I did. Not too bad for the first go. These two motors here one controls uh, the rotation of the end effector and one controls the tilt on the wrist. Um, this one here controls this joint and then these two front ones which is the main torquier ones controls the main base joint and this one controls the rotation. Still not finished yet you can see I've got a spacer in here at the minute uh, that, there's going to be another gear here, so this motor here rotates this gear, see that this belt here is connected to this belt, which then in turn rotates this joint. If you look here, you've got a gear ready to take another belt, which comes down here, and which will go here. Now these two gears will be connected through this shaft, so when this belt rotates, this shaft will rotate. I will also rotate this gear. As you can see, you've got linear ball bearings here. They are going to be changed eventually for um, normal ball bearings. I just chucked them in there because they happen to be perfect size, and that's why I had lying around. Yeah, so that's got to be done yet. Um, these two belts here, right on the edge, control this joint. And that's going down into a pivot in there, connected to the main joint. The, this this drive belt here is connected to that 
belt here, this one here, and this drive belt connected to that belt, which is actually a little bit loose, tying up at one cog. I'm quite impressed that, considering this is the first time I've printed all these parts, they've all worked together quite, quite neatly. Um, the base, underneath the base there, just see right in there is a uh, what you call them, thrust bearings which at the minute there's a bit too much play you can see I'm just twiddling the motor there and it's a little bit too much so I'm just first port of call is to um, tighten up the, the main bolt there just try and keep everything tension but if not I'm going to have to redesign that base you can see there the pinion for the uh, rotational axis on the base This is the wrist joint. Little focus there. Um, so you've got two belts coming in. Got one, this gear here turns this gear, which turns this rotational axis. And then this belt right in here controls this rotation. So if I send a command to move. The rotation you can see up there. If I go back, you see there's, there's a little bit of play in there just because I'm missing a, um, a washer that was designed to go in there. And then to move the rotation, I'll send another command. When you move, when you start moving axis other than this 360 here, you have to think about moving other steppers at the same time. Simply because if I, I'm just going to disable all the motors now. So the rotational is fine, but if you was to move, I'll show you what I mean. If you just to move this stepper, you can see the rotation. You can see it a bit like a diff in a car. You see the gear moving around that gear, which causes a bit of an error. So it was quite fun to uh, it was quite fun to program because if you move this base joint, this will have a knock-on effect to all three joints. So you simply add add the steps as you go further up the line, but it took me a while to get there. A better view of the joint here, it's pointing towards me. Uh, I'm going to set a command just to move the end effect, it's pointing down now, minus 30 degrees. If I just move it up to 40 degrees, you see it moving both at the same time. Perfect, send it back down. Now, if I was just to move one of them joints. So, uh, 120 degrees. See, let's move briefly. And then back. So, that's, that's more of an understanding. Hopefully, that explains more on how that joint works. So, here we have the arm here pointing towards me. So here's the current angles of each joint from the most this away from the base there, so joint one, which I call them. I don't call them wrists, I don't know what to keep them. To know what I'm talking about, I try to keep them joint one, joint two, joint three, furthest from the end effector. So joint one is rotation, and then joint two, three, four, five. So say if I wanted these are all absolute positions, so say if I wanted uh, to move the end effect from 90 degrees to the left, then I simply put 90 in and send it, and then. There we go, I went to the right, but if I wanted to go 90 degrees the other way, just put minus 90. I'll move it back. You see the play there. So I programmed just two movements in here. So I've got this function will move joints to angle. So the robot arm will move all its joints till they get to hit these. 
and only when it'll get to them it'll move to the next it'll step to the next uh, movement function which pretty much goes back to where it is so if I, if I press play now I'll show you exactly what it looks like so, so. Now if you look the end effect is kept in, kept perfectly level perfect now this arm was in my too hard to build category but only because I could not figure out how to drive all five axes at the same time with coordinated moves now luckily a guy called sorry a channel called iForce 2D uploaded a video and the title was a music to my ears and I knew then as soon as I seen that software I can go ahead and build the arm so a big thanks to him because his video is fantastic. His knowledge of maths and interpretation of math is uh, second to none. And the way he, he goes through every part of driving stepper motors from the basics to then eventually coordinated six axis stepper moves is just uh, oh, it's absolute godsend. So big thank you to him. So I programmed the software to make some random moves. Don't know where it's going to go. So I'm going to press play and hopefully it doesn't smash into anything. So let's make this arm do something useful. Here i got a plastic cup. I want to move it from here to there and then back again. Quite simple. So here's the code. Uh, so it starts at the top, goes to a line-up position, brings the claws in, lifts up the claws, moves it across, puts it down, claws out. Waits there for a second, brings the claws back in, lifts it up, and then brings it back and puts it down. Fairly straightforward. Once you know what angles to put the joints up, then uh, you just enter them in. So, press P, here we go. <laughs> There we go, send it back home. So things to get finished for the next video would be to get this little N20 geared motor wired up. Tiny little gears in that little gearbox. Um, gonna get possibly some LEDs in the front, a bit like headlights or somewhere on the arm. Um, get the belt for this joint on. Might need to re-engineer the base. Stop the play. I get these umbilical cables down the center so you can't see all these. Um, but other than that, I'm really ha happy with the outcome. Chuffed a bit of it. Thanks again to iForce2D for his code. No way would I've got this complete without him. Um, I'll put a link in the description to go watch his video. I'm sure you'll enjoy it as well. Especially if you want to make your own uh, stepper controlled robot arm. That code there would be very useful to yourself. So if you want to see the second video guys, uh, like and subscribe and you'll find out exactly when it's uploaded. Cheers again. Ciao.